first guns. This has got to be one of the most popular subjects on YouTube. What was your first gun? This was mine. What do you suggest? Top five best beginner guns. The works is one of one of the most popular subjects for airsoft on YouTube. And today I just want to talk a little bit about my first gun. Much like everybody on the market, it was a combat machine. It's the tried and true combat machine. This thing this thing has got to take number one place for probably one of the most sold airsoft rifles on the market and it attracts a ton of new players for good reasons and today i just want to talk a little bit about me my history with this gun why i think it is a great gun how i've got it set up just the work how did how did i start airsoft with this gun <laughs> So first of all things, it comes with a high cap and high caps make noise. And I don't want that in my mic in my video the whole time. So I'm just gonna set that down there and I'm gonna save you guys the ear rape from your headphones if any of you guys are wearing those tonight. So we're just gonna start off by telling you guys how I have this set up and why I have it set up the way that I do. And then I'm gonna dive into more specifics about the gun. So starting from the front, moving our way down to the rear, I have a 3D printed suppressor from Surefire, it's just the Silcom 556 Mini. Uh, this was 3D printed by myself. It had, I took the files from online and I worked on it. This was like the third attempt that I had done and it finally worked out. And I have a couple of these on different guns and then I gave one to friends. They're, it's great, it's 14 millimeter counterclockwise. Works nice, it looks cool. I don't have an extended inner barrel inside of this. I just, I'm a huge fan when it comes to making guns look cool. Half the part of airsoft is aesthetics in the first place. And I'm just a huge fan of guns that make you feel awesome. Because when you're out there and you're just having fun, it adds such a level of immersion that I can't I can't really logically explain it to anybody because logically saying it should come off just because it's got no purpose. But for those of you out there who love to feel that little little bit of awesomeness out there, you, you'll, you'll understand why you run these. Right here, I've got a flashlight, it's made by Anchor. You can pull or push on it to control the uh, like the focus on it. Having a little bit of a light on your gun not only makes it look cool, but it does have some functionality when you actually got to use it. So I've got Magpul rail covers. I just kind of put, like redid the whole front section of this gun. Magpul rail covers and Magpul vertical grip. So when I hold onto the gun here, my thumb just kind of naturally rests on the flashlight so I can aim it and I can turn it on and off as I go. Works great, very comfortable. It's only big enough to grasp onto, minimalistic. For this, vertical grip works great. Right on top, I have an optic. It's just a red and green dot because I use green during the day, so it's bright red at night, so it's a little bit darker. That way it stands out. You can see yourself in the wood. I just want to go off on a rabbit trail here and say that Pinty is probably the best optics brand for airsoft. They make a great quality. I've got no optics protector on this thing. I can already think of five moments that this has been shot on the lens, and I'm sure it's been more than five times, and this is $30. If you're not convinced after that, every single one of the Novridge optics, or maybe not every one, majority of them, are actually Pinty optics with a different brand name on it. If y'all are looking for something that's cheap, but it's the same exact red dot, this works great. My iron sights, made by G&G &G as well. These are the Knights Armament iron sights that came with my SR-15. I don't use iron sights on my SR-15 just because of how my optic setup is ran. So I just kind of keep it on here. I usually keep the front post sight permanently up. If I had to add anything to this gun, I'd probably put a PEC box and just keep this permanently up as like a reference point. So it's a good optic setup. I don't really think much about it. I just kind of use it. A stock and charging handle, grip, all that stuff is the same. Does not lock to the rear, so it's just spring. Moving to the other side of the gun, it doesn't really have any sling points. The ones on the stock are fake. The ring right here is if you want to add a carabiner, sleeve it through. The stock does have a little slit back here for you to sleeve your sling through, but they didn't really have that in mind with this gun. You'll have to upgrade it or change some parts out or whatnot, but it's all good. Moving down to the lower receiver, you actually do have ambidextrous magazine release, which arguably is one of the more important ambidextrous things. And I love that G&G &G comes with it because if you are a lefty, I'm correct handed, but if you are a lefty and you're weird, you've got ambidextrous magazine release right there. The only thing you don't have is ambidextrous fire controls, which is still fun because I see people do it with their thumb all the time. Not that big of a deal. 
and unlike a lot of brands actually it has the stopping points right here and here that way you don't actually do a 360 you'll see with a lot of the old lancers you can like move them 360 and you'll break them or whatever but gng includes the stoppers love that detail keep doing that please and that's about it for how the gun's set up and like the features that it's got so talking about the internals a little bit forgive me i am not a tech i i have taken my fair share of airsoft guns apart i hate it i don't know how you techs do it out there you guys are gifted keep on doing the good work for me I've never had to take this gun apart. I got this back in Christmas of 2018, 2019. I believe it was Christmas 2019. I have fixed two things on this gun, total. I had to fix a wobbly handguard by tightening the screws. Doesn't really count. And then I've had to solder the wires back together. My dad and I actually only did that two days ago. One day ago, yesterday, actually. Yeah, I'm fairly, I'm fairly sure we did that yesterday. So it's been, it's been a long time. And finally, the wires just came, came apart, soldered it back together, no problem. Aside from that, this gun has not had a single thing wrong with it. And yeah, aside from that, the whole gun has held up the performance side of things. As any experienced airsofter knows, the longer the barrel you have only helps in very minute amounts. It's more about the quality of the barrel and the spring and all the pressure inside the gearbox. It's just not the same as real firearms, it differs a little bit more. So taking that into mind this 10.3 inch barrel again that's what i think it is has been amazing my knights which is sporting a 14.5 inch barrel obviously has a little bit better but that's also a 400 dollars gun this is just around 200 you can find it on sale for 180 every once in a while but it's about 200 to 215 so i'd say the biggest thing that you lack with this gun compared to a high gun like high-end gun like that is going to be trigger response and features this gun is plain, this gun is simple. When I say plain and simple, I mean you have safe, semi, full auto. Those, those are your options. You don't have binary, two round, three round, four round, five round burst. You don't have all those options. It doesn't have an electronic trigger unit or MOSFET to my knowledge. It does have a fuse though. That's good. Regardless of that, the trigger response, it kind of sucks, but I'm only saying that because I've shot really, really nice airsoft guns. I've shot stuff with top tier performance just friends guns of course not mine my i'll dive into my other gun that has a lot better here in a moment but as for this it only sucks because you're comparing it to what's new on the market if this is the only gun that was ever existed in airsoft like this was the peak height you'd be blown away because this gun has decent semi and it's got it's got pretty good full auto too i just kind of want to show you guys that here and here so if i turn around here and show you the trigger you're, the, it doesn't have a button. A lot of GNGs have like that button trigger that you can feel that physically. But for this, it's just dead space until you hit it. You do have a reset and it's audible. And then if you want to spam it. So you can see your trigger finger can go a lot faster than the trigger response. And that's what I think a lot of people differ about this. But you know what? Somebody had told me a little while ago when you buy beginner guns like these that didn't really have all the fancy features you see now in like the Lancer Gen 3s and the SSR4 and whatnot, is a lot of beginners use full auto. Now, I know a lot of fields kind of ban that for M4s, but uh, people that are working on guns like these that are like low dollar, high, like good performance for your money, know that a newer players are going to be attracted to this. People who don't know a whole lot about airsoft, they just want a reliable gun, so they know they're going to be using full auto a lot. And full auto is pretty decent. This thing is scary. So <laughs> my first time playing airsoft, my brother and I each had one of these. And my neighbor had one of those. I think they were like $80 licensed HK from Cabela's that he got. Fun gun. Don't get me wrong. That thing is that thing is pretty good. But at the same time, that compared to this, is it's it's a difference. There, there, there is a difference. And full auto on this thing is great for the amount of money you spend. And I feel like that's why it doesn't have the best semi-auto trigger response. It just wasn't wasn't really intended to be the ultimate semi spam feel like full auto experience my knights on the other hand that that gun i have been accused of the whole full auto but it's actually semi thing more than once it's semi man so having a nice high-end gun like that that can do those things 
kind of makes me less appreciate how good that this gun is. I'd like to just talk about why I think that this is one of the best beginner guns and also one of the worst because it falls into both categories. So full disclaimer, when I got this gun, the Lancer Gen 3 did not exist. The Lancer Gen 2 was just building up its popularity. The SEMA Platinum and all those other like base beginner guns, I wasn't into Airsoft. I, I had an interest. I said, Dad, I want an Airsoft gun for Christmas. He did the research. He bought me this gun, which was an amazing choice. And I didn't really know much at the time. I only started really getting into it, building knowledge after I got this gun. And I'm very glad that this was my first gun. The furthest I've ever had this gun apart is upper receiver, lower receiver, inner barrel out of the gun. That's, that's it. Never had that gun apart more than that. And that should say something because I am super rough on my stuff. All the kind of crazy things that I do, how many times that I fall, like how rough, just... I'm not easy on my stuff. Down there. And this thing has been an absolute tank. Because my SR, which is a $400 gun, this is $200, that broke. A Lancer Gen 3 broke on a friend who's very easy on it. So a lot of different guns are going to have their problems. This doesn't. Don't know why. Can't explain why. My brothers have the same thing with it. I have a friend who has one of these, and he's had the same thing with it. They just don't die. That's what I love about it. But it comes at a cost. And that cost is... You're not getting features that most other guns have at the time. And even when I bought this gun, there were other guns that had faster trigger response for a similar price. SEMA Platinums being what I'm hinting at there. And the Lancer Gen 2s, because they actually did have, they have really good trigger response for how much you are paying for them. But you're almost paying the same price as a Gen 3. So again, it's, I'm trying to say this is one of the best beginner guns out there because of what it is. But when you think that you could spend 30 bucks more and get something with a ton of features, that's what makes this gun one of the worst because you're paying almost the same money for something that's just like lackluster. But it lasts longer. That's what I needed. If I was going to buy my own airsoft gun, did my own research when I did it, I probably would have bought a Gen 2 or if I was like getting into it now before the Gen 3s came out, I'd buy a Gen 3 or an SSR4. Love them both equally. They're practically the same gun. But this thing... It's sentimental. I don't think that I will ever get rid of this thing. This has been an awesome gun. I would highly recommend this to anybody who just wants to have an airsoft gun. Just go out, have fun, because you can do everything with this. So if you're not picky on binary and high trigger response and two round, three round, four round, five round burst, it's all that kind of fancy stuff, buy one of these. The new combat machines come in around $300, like the combat machine that I'm talking about, like the ARP-9, the CMF-16, all of those ones, they cost a bit more because the internals are higher quality, but they're still combat machines. I forgot to mention it earlier, but the polymer on this thing, holy crap, this thing, this isn't like plastic polymer. The old combat machines, like the the classic Raiders or the RL-8s or any of that stuff, that's, that, that's more plasticky polymer. This is high high-end polymer. I think words can only go so far when you're talking about something. You're gonna have to hold one and see one. This is really, really good stuff. This is probably one of the best polymer bodies ever made. Probably, probably is the best polymer body airsoft gun ever made. KWA, I gotta say, close second if not an exact tie. They're not the same kind. They don't have the same feel, but the quality and the feel are I honestly couldn't probably say which one's better because I, I forgot about that a moment ago and now I'm just can't choose. They're both awesome. So if you've held the KWA, expect the same quality from GNG. If you've held the GNG, expect the same quality of KWA. Final thoughts. I don't use this gun as much as I should. I have a couple of airsoft guns in my name now, and my SR has been one of the one of the top guns that I've used a lot, and then it broke. Long story, not something I'm going to get into, but I was using my Novrich SSG-10. I've had an amazing time with that gun, and then this broke, and then my Elite Force 1911 broke, my SSP-1 broke. Everything started going down. And then this was an easy fix. This was simple, didn't take that long, and I fixed it, and then I kind of fell in love with it again. So it's just like that one thing that you kind of forgot about, you got back into, and now it's like one of the best parts. Because I just haven't used this gun in so long. I feel like I've done myself a disservice in a way. I can't explain it, but I'm going to an airsoft game next weekend, and this is probably what I'm going to be using for the first half. I expect to see some footage from this, because I think the one thing that's always deferred me from making footage with this gun is because when you have, when you have like, lower performance, because everyone can tell it's not a snappy trigger. Like, it sounds snappy, but when you actually pull the trigger, it doesn't feel it, and I just... 
my mind just says, oh, nobody's going to watch gameplay with the combat machine. They're going to want to see really cool stuff. So I never really made gameplay on this. That's going to change because I love this gun. I want to use it more. Um, probably I'm going to be using my full kit setup when I do that. So I'll probably be running all of these mid cap magazines and probably throw my gas mask on my helmet in the field's going to love that. Go check out in the field's airsoft channel. I'll put a link in the description. Probably can't find him very easily by searching him, but sub to him, go sub to Trito tactical. All these, all these guys are kind of like what makes up my neighbors. They don't actually live close to me, but I call it neighbors just because that bond that community that you get with airsoft is kind of what got me into it as a whole. No, I haven't actually been to an airsoft field before where you go and you pay and like you have a big organized game. I've just gotten together private games with friends. That's what kind of prompted me to do neighborly airsoft as my name. Just it felt it felt right just of how I perceive airsoft. So go out there, have some fun. Definitely keep keep an eye open for some future gameplay with this thing and I will see you guys later.